This is gonna be a very simple, easy to follow routine with minimal products and techniques. Ideal for if you're just starting out or perhaps if you're even just trying to work out if you have a wave pattern. I'm gonna show you how you can take your hair from looking like this, okay, I'm sure yours doesn't look as bad as mine does right here, to this. I'm gonna keep things mega simple today. We're gonna to use three, possibly four products. And the reason I say possibly is one of them is a heat protectant. So if you're not diffusing, you'll only need three. There is no brush styling. There are no curl clumping techniques. I'm just gonna keep it super simple. I will make sure that I include as much detail as possible so that you feel confident to recreate this routine at home for your waves. If at any point you're watching and you feel unsure about something or have a question, pop it in the comments box and I will get back to you. Okay, let's get on with the routine. Starting off in the shower, you want to cleanse your hair twice with a sulfate-free shampoo. Two questions I would immediately think of if someone said that statement to me are why sulfate-free and why twice? Let's talk about sulfates first. I've done a lot of reading about sulfates and it's a topic that can cause some pretty heated debates on the internet. I like to make decisions about products and methods that I may choose to use based on a couple of different things. Firstly, factual and scientific information and also anecdotal information. So recommendations from friends or peers or people with similar hair and skin types and concerns as me. The more I read online about sulfates, the more confused I become. And ultimately, from many rabbit holes I went down, I came back up with the phrase, a lack of substantial research. The best I can do is to say, I choose to avoid, or actually perhaps a more accurate description would be, I choose to significantly reduce the sulfates within my hair care products, because although sulfates are powerful cleansing agents, they are almost too efficient in their cleansing and they can't distinguish between what is pollution and product buildup and dirt from what are natural healthy oils and sebums. So I err on the side of caution and choose to go sulfate free when not clarifying my hair. To address the second question, why cleanse twice? For me, the first cleanse is breaking down the dirt, pollution, dead skin cells, product buildup and so on. And the second cleanse then washes it all away and out of my hair. I think this is even more important when you are opting for a more gentle cleansing agent and going sulfate free. When you shampoo, you want to focus on your scalp and your roots. It won't matter if you also like to shampoo your mid lengths and ends, it's not gonna damage your hair, but be aware that hair is more fragile when it's wet. But what you really want to do is focus your attention on getting your scalp and roots clean and free from product buildup. One of my absolute favorite shampoos to use at the moment is Rhyme and Reason's Wave Revival. It's free from sulfates, silicones, mineral oils, parabens, and it's not tested on animals. By the way, at this point, I'd like to highlight I do not follow a curly girl method or a wavy girl method. However, this product does comply with both. Emulsify your shampoo between your hands first and then apply to your roots and scalp. I like to take one hand to the front, kind of around my forehead and other to the back and that just helps me get a good even distribution. I also take some time to massage my scalp. My goal is to grow much longer, stronger hair. And as we age, hormones have a big impact on hair growth and also hair density. So I'm looking to develop some really good habits and practices now that will help with any possible potential changes that the future may bring. So one of these habits is to regularly massage my scalp as this will help increase blood flow and circulation to the area. I said I was gonna keep things simple for this video, so I won't do a deep dive now on scalp care, but if you would like some more information, you can check out this video here. Now thoroughly rinse your hair of shampoo. I use lukewarm water when I wash my hair and I will always finish with cold water, but we'll talk about why in the next step, which is conditioning. I'm using a protein conditioner from Aldi. I go on about this stuff all the time and it's pretty much featured in every single video I do. And that is because it is absolutely amazing. Plus it's only just over a quid. I think too much information when you're starting something new can be paralyzing and overwhelming. So I don't want to confuse things right now by talking about porosity and density and so on. 
but I do want to help you choose the right conditioner for your hair. That way you'll get the best results possible. My advice is if you've got color treated, heat damaged, neglected, dry or brittle hair, opt for a protein based conditioner. If that doesn't describe your hair, opt for a moisturizing conditioner. My protein recommendations obviously would be this one from Aldi. It's soy protein, it gives your hair amazing slip and it leaves waves bouncy and defined. However, if you don't have an Aldi near you or if you do, but then it's out of stock, which annoyingly it often is, then an amazing alternative is the goat's milk hair mask from Jaya. Now I appreciate that's a hair mask, but actually this is such a lightweight formula. I quite often just use this as a conditioner instead. Some recommendations for more moisturising based conditioners, firstly would be Maui Moisture Hair Care um, and it's the lightweight hydration one. This is particularly good because as the name says, it's lightweight so it's great for waves. From the same range, if you're looking for something a little bit more nourishing, if your hair's a little bit on the drier side, then I can definitely recommend the coconut milk conditioner. And then finally, another one that I particularly love is the coconut and hibiscus curl and shine conditioner. Now that does have silk protein and neem oil, so it's quite a good go between if you feel like you might need a little bit of protein as well as some moisturizing ingredients. You've got the right conditioner for your hair, now you need the right method to apply it. As a newbie to the world of waves and curls, you may not be familiar with the term squish to condish, but that does need to change as this method is well worth getting super familiar with. Essentially, the term is short for squishing to condition. Mm, I know. Here's how to do it. Once you've applied conditioner to your hair, Personally, I choose to cover my roots as well as my mid lengths and my ends, but that's because I've got colour, I've got new growth, and I've got greys that need taming. So if you don't have any of that, just focus on the mid lengths and ends. Next step, I'm now going to use my wet brush to comb the conditioner through. I cannot recommend this brush enough, but if you don't have one and don't want to make purchase commitments at this point in your wavy hair journey, completely get it. Other tools that you may already have at home that you could use would be a tangle teaser, that's what I used when I first started out, or a wide tooth comb, or at a real push you could gently detangle with your fingers. But I do emphasise the word gently because hair is more fragile so just be careful. As I've just shown you, perhaps a little too up close and personally, sorry about that, it's a good idea to brush in sections from the ends up. This stops you yanking and pulling on tangles and snags and potentially damaging your hair. Keep brushing in sections until all your hair is completely detangled. You are now ready to squish to condition. Look at the level of concentration on my face. Talk about not being able to do more than one thing at once, operate a camera and squish conditioner into my hair. Anyway, this is a very simple technique. You need to fill your hands with water and then cup your hair into your hands and squish. Easy. The reason it's good to do this when you have wavy or curly hair textures is that it really helps to hydrate and moisturize your hair. Repeat the technique until all of your hair has been squished. You should hear a really good squelchy sound when you're doing the technique. I then always fully rinse out my conditioner. If I only partly rinse, it will weigh down my loose wave pattern. Also, complete aside for a second, if you ever find that you're getting acne spots, breakouts along your hairline, it is very likely that you're leaving behind conditioner residue. That can often cause spots and breakouts. So just make sure you're cleansing thoroughly along the hairline. Anyway, back to hair. For the final rinse, this is when I'm gonna turn the temperature of the water to cold. This helps to seal hair cuticles back down and that results in a smoother finish with less frizz. FYI, this is much easier in the summer than in winter. So your hair's now clean, hydrated, and you're ready to step out of the shower. But there is one last important thing. Do not twist or squeeze out the water in your hair. You've got to leave it soaking wet. Here, let me show you just how wet my hair is before I step out of the shower. See, it's soaking, and that is what you want. 
Okay, so you're out the shower. Once upon a time, I would have wrapped my hair in a towel. Now, embracing your wavy hair texture, you wanna stop doing that. The fabric can cause a lot of friction and friction equals frizz. So instead, opt for a soft microfiber towel or hair wrap. And if you don't have one of those, just use an old t-shirt like I am here. Or even better, just let your hair stay unwrapped and soaking wet. Oh God, what a loser, so sorry about the double thumbs up. So now we're ready to start styling and I'm sharing a really simple technique. This is what I only ever used to do to my hair to wear it wavy. For this, all you're gonna need is a curl cream and a soft t-shirt. Those really are the only things that you absolutely need, but I am also going to use a wet brush and a continuous spray bottle and then a diffuser. My hair has dried out a bit because I was faffing around getting the camera set up and whatnot, so I need to re-wet it, and that's why I'm using my continuous spray bottle. Now, curl cream. Emulsify your curl cream between your hands. This will help to activate the ingredients and cover your palms evenly for better distribution through your hair. As a beginner, don't worry about terms like glazing, raking, roping, just focus on getting the curl cream evenly all over your hair. I choose to then use a wet brush to make sure I've got a really, really good distribution of product. Again, if you don't have the wet brush, you can use a tangle teaser or a wide tooth comb for this part. Styling product applied, now you're gonna do the simplest of wave defining techniques, and that's to scrunch your hair. Forget brush styling, curl clumping, clipping and pinning your waves for right now. Just do this easy technique and that will help further enhance your natural texture. Quick tip worth knowing is shake up your hair a little bit and even run your fingers through it from the roots upwards and outwards. This helps your natural wave begin to emerge and it gives a bit of a natural root lift as it gets the hair up and off of your scalp. To scrunch your hair, use both hands, start at the ends and gently squeeze a handful of hair upwards towards your roots. At the top, I then squeeze and pulse a couple of times. That is literally all you need to do. Work in sections until all of your hair is completely scrunched. Here you can see the big difference between the side that's been scrunched and the side with just my natural wave pattern. I do then like to gently roll my head into the upside down position. Avoid flipping forwards um, because that can cause frizz. And then I scrunch all of my hair again together. Now you want to micro plop. Take your soft t-shirt or microfiber towel and use that to scrunch your hair. It's the same technique you just did with your hands but with a t-shirt. This will add definition and it soaks up excess water and product. You're now ready for the drying step. Now you can choose to just let your hair air dry. Super important though, do not touch your hair. Trust me on this. Or you can choose to diffuse your hair, which is what I'm going to do today. So first, I will always, always use a heat protectant. I spray it all over my waves and then I'm gonna diffuse for about five to 10 minutes and let the rest air dry. To maintain the theme of simplicity, I would just say avoid moving your hair about too much when diffuse drying and definitely do not touch it. But if you would like more details on how to diffuse dry your waves, I'll link a video here and it covers the hover, upside down and pixie diffusing methods. Watching someone diffuse their hair, I believe would be comparable to watching paint dry. So let's skip to the end. Oh yeah, actually one more small tip I have. When you're air drying, I have found these clips to be absolutely brilliant. They stop me from constantly trying to tuck my hair behind my ears and just touching it in general. They keep the hairs off my face basically. And that way I can do my skincare or as I am here, my makeup, while my hair air dries, and it's definitely, definitely helped me to reduce the amount I fiddle and touch my waves. Okay, so I've air dried my hair now to about 90% dry. Now I head back to finish it off to make sure it's 100% dry with the diffuser. No scrunching out the crunch because there is none. Literally, once I'm air dried, the routine is finished. By the way, those are my super lazy ragdoll cats who won't be disturbed at all from their slumber by the hairdryer. 
and here are my results from a super simple beginner friendly wavy hair routine. I hope you guys have found this super, super helpful. I've tried to keep it as simple as possible, but I am gonna build a series of videos where I'll also show you how to take it from this very simple routine and slowly introduce other methods and techniques. If there's any specific questions, please pop them into the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, bye.